Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, at the risk of losing some viewers from my key demographic, we're going to step outside of the comic book store and into the bookstore and or library. We want to talk about who is the true dominating force in graphic novels and comics, right? I mean, why even draw a distinction? But if we're going to talk about an original graphic novelist whose stuff is not serialized in comic book form, who just can drop full color, full size graphic novels on the market and sell millions of copies, who are we talking about? Well, nobody else but Raina Telgemeier. And today we're going to talk about her latest in a series of monster hits for kids, Guts. Today on Comic Book News. Hey, today we're not going to talk about X-Men, all right? I'm sure we're going to get a lot less views on this video than I usually do, but this one is super important to me because we're going to talk about the true driving force in graphic novels and comics to like the mainstream, right? To the real world. People like me who go to the comic book store every week, you know what? I'll fish through the dumpsters for the comic books if I have to. I'm going to get what I need, right? But the rest of the world is not so hardcore. They go to bookstores. They might see a graphic novel casually at a bookstore or, or uh, in a lot of different venues these days. And what are they going to see but the works of Raina Telgemeier, right? Raina is uh, the undisputed queen of the graphic novel, I would have to say at this point. Uh, let's dip in to the Million Dollar Comics camp for a second here and, and, and check out her website, Go Raina, right? This is actually the official website of Raina Telgemeier. Uh, she's published by Scholastic, right? Scholastic is the kid's book company. Um, the, I believe the first comics that Scholastic actually published was the colorized version of Jeff Smith's Bone. But from there, man, they've gone on to publish so many monster hits in the in the kids market it's not even funny but nobody uh, is selling better stuff than or more stuff to more people than Raina Telgemeier her her book smile uh, Eisner award winning um, you see it in libraries and schools and bookstores all over the place but you know what is it why you might if you're a comic book fan you might say why Dan why do you care about this this is for kids right well yeah, it's for kids. And if we want comics to be around for the next generation, right, we got to get kids interested in reading comics. It's not easy to get a kid to read a comic book, especially a young girl, uh, or at least at w that was true when I was growing up. These days, it's cake, right? Because the comics have been accepted in the classroom and in the libraries, and everybody knows what I've known for a long time, which is that kids that read comics are kids that love reading trademark so let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, more about her sales success right here's a quote from my man brian hibbs recently interviewed here on this channel <clears throat> literally every book she's done that is in print is a top of the charts bestseller which is wildly unprecedented in our data set hibbs wrote Altogether, Raina's eight books sell a staggering 1.3 million copies for $14.4 million in sales. To put that in context, that means that nearly 5% of all dollars generated by all graphic novels listed are coming from the pen of one woman. Okay, so let's... Her sales are unprecedented. She, a, a, a traditional comic book writer would, would kill for sales like this. Uh, you know, only books like Watchmen or Dark Knight Returns or something like that that that, that has full, fully been embraced by the bookstore market even has a hope at, at, at reaching this. But man, this is getting pushed in the schools and then in the libraries and at book fairs and everywhere else. And that's what makes uh, Reign of the Queen, right? Let's look at this book tour coming up. Um, sold out all over the place. She is a celebrity. There is just no doubt about it. Uh, everywhere she goes, people want to talk to Raina and talk about her comics. And that's what we're going to do right now, right? Let's, uh, let's go to the Million Dollar Comics cam uh, and take a look at Guts, okay? Because this is not just hype. 
Reina has serious chops as a cartoonist. Now, immediately when I was reading this, I was trying to pin down what does her style remind me of? Who does it remind me of? It's 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 definitely more of a cartoony style. The the first thing that came to my mind was For Better or For Worse by Lynn Johnston, one of my favorite all-time favorite comic strips. And sure enough, I was reading and that's one of her like seminal influences as a kid. She grew up reading Calvin and Hobbes and For Better or For Worse. And you can see the influence of both of these, right? You can see the grounded reality of For Better or For Worse and and the emotions and the the, 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 the simple storytelling. And then you can, in some of the banners, you get more imaginative layouts and crazy stuff going on that is really not easy to pull off, right? A, a comic is not a kid's book, even if it's a kid's comic. It's not an illustrated story. It is a comic. So this requires somebody versed in all of, in, in the medium and you know all of the tricks and things that you can pull off. And it is just clear for me in reading this book that Raina Telgemeier, while I, I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna hesitate to call her a master, mistress, master of the medium, but she's well on her way. She's an accomplished journeyman. She wrote and drew the Babysitter Club series for Scholastic before now just being like an auteur who gets to write and draw the story she cares about. So this story is sort of semi-autobiographical. Let's take a look at this page, right, where we capture her sort of thoughts in, in four different locations at the same time. This is something that somebody who doesn't, hasn't read and experienced a lot of comics would usually not attempt or think to, to attempt or pull off in comics, right? It's not just a moment to moment transition in the panels. It's like an aspect to aspect transition, the same person in different times, but in the same form. Mwah! This is the stuff I love about the form and the medium of comics. Okay, enough about the style because you can tell I really like it. And and aren't these colors beautiful? I mean, the Million Dollar Comics cam is does a, a lot of justice to flat colored comics like this when the pages are not so shiny. It just really comes through. And this is a very pleasing book to read. I read the entire thing in in, in you know uh, maybe half an hour, super fast. And not because I was trying to speed through it, because I was just sucked in and it felt like no time at all. It was, it was such an engaging story. It's all about Raina uh, herself, sort of her story of having uh, chronic like digestion problems, right, when she's a kid and, and nervousness and uh, how she went to therapy to learn to cope with that and, you know, how she, she learned to even get over the stigma of therapy and share this with her friends. The, the relationships and the friendships ring true. There's rivalries and friendships and things to overcome. Uh, you know, cool visual metaphors like, you know, the difference between thoughts and feelings. This is something comics are really great at being able to give a visual metaphor this way. And there's moments where, you know, Raina has, ha, has thoughts about that she has to dispel, right? She has to dispel. She, her, her, friend her rival got sick and is leaving from school and she gets these thoughts of like yay i'm free of this person who's been teasing me but her feelings inside are like no she this this she's a person she's a human and uh and she's able to overcome her thoughts right and and embrace her feelings this is this is weird because this is tough for me i'm a i'm a i'm the youngest of four boys i was i was raised in an atmosphere where it wasn't really all, and a time when it wasn't really all about sharing your feelings. Now I'm the father of two girls, and my wife is a therapist to to kids in the school system. And she deals, I bought this book for her, thinking that it might um, help some of her kids and help her. And I just ended up falling in love with it instantaneously. I dare you not to. The style is so appealing. The characters are so real and likable, but yet realistic. Uh, not Pollyanna, uh, uh, but real kids, like, you know, with, with good faults and, and, and uh, pros and cons and everything else, right? Really a wonderful thing. I, I'm not ashamed to say that, that, that I broke down, like, emotionally and cried at a couple of points. I laughed at a lot of points. There's an awful lot of fart jokes in this book because it deals with digestion and this is proof that that's not just a boy's only thing, right? It, it works in this comic. And then we get a little bit of um, 
uh, notes from the author about how you know she grew up and this really is was part of her experience growing up I it's hard for me to express how much I really love this comic I'm not just saying it right it it was great this is one of those things where I I think that uh, a, a really great comic you know it sort of transcends audience right the best all ages material are, are truly all ages not something that's just aimed for a certain reading or grade level as you might expect something from Scholastic to be but something that is just universally appealing in a way that it can truly appeal to a, a, a little kid or an adult what this reminds me the most of if I, if I were if I sum it up like this reminds me uh, thematically and story-wise of some of the books of Judy Bloom that I read as a kid Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, my, probably my all-time favorite book as a kid. Um, and it, she wrote a lot of stuff about growing up, about puberty, both for boys and girls. Those are themes that are dealt with um, here in this uh, book as well. Uh, dealt with, though, in a way that's just down-to-earth and real and, and, and fantastic. And it's delivered in this style that, like I said, is a combination of Judy Bloom and Lynn Johnson, for better or for worse. And I can't think of a better combination for young kids, boys, girls, undecided, you name it. Uh, there's there's something to get out of guts. There's something to learn about how to overcome your fears and conquer your anxieties and how to share your feelings with your friends, right? And help them feel better and help them help you feel better. Oh man, this is not my usual kind of review, but uh, I'm super glad that I did it. Another thing that I'm super glad about is any of you that watched this and stuck around to this point, right? Thank you for watching. I promise I'm not going to give up on reviews like this. It's not just going to be all X-Men all the time. I'm going to talk about the stuff I care and love about. Comics for kids, comics for adults, comics for everybody. So. Thank you for watching and supporting. Thanks for clicking subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You know the drill. Uh, just keep watching and we'll see you next time.